back to the Future Print Leaders Summit. Have with me here Mr. John Mills, who is the CEO of Zar, um, the leading independent manufacturer of inkjet head technology. Welcome, John. Hi, hi, Marcus. Um, thanks for joining us again. It's sort of a, a kind of a, a, an update on the talk you gave in October, which is uh, which was laid out in the new Zar roadmap. This session is called um, "Collaboration is the New." innovation so we're look, looking forward to hearing that so we're going to transfer over to you now you're going to give the talk and then we're going to have a few questions at the end so again welcome and um, over to you John. Thank you Marcus uh, and thanks everybody for coming today. Um, first of all we just wanted to share with you our uh, vision it's a it's a bold vision uh, a world where you can print anything you can imagine but clearly we can't do that by ourselves we're going to need partners and people who are going to help us to achieve that. And to do that, we need to put in place an infrastructure uh, to help our partners deliver that. And these are the four pillars of that infrastructure I think are important to, to do it. Uh, business model, products and technology, trust and culture of innovation within the company itself. Uh, and all of that is a mission that we're on to ensure that we help our, uh, the companies that we're partnering with to become more colourful, creative and productive through our world-class technology and print heads. So the first of those things, uh, business model. Uh, the business model is really important because ultimately that's the, how we actually run the business and, and, and the way that we interact with, with customers. And in, in the past, historically, Zara's uh, these, uh, sold print heads made by other people and it's caused a little bit of confusion in the market uh, but going forward we we'll be very clear that we're only going to sell print heads that have been designed and developed and manufactured um, by Zara. Uh, we're very clear who our uh, customers are, we see two categories of customers, one OEMs who are people we all uh, know extremely well, they develop systems uh, for different market sectors and sell those systems into end users who will use them to, to, to print whatever uh, product uh, is in their market sector. But we increasingly see a new class of, uh, of, of customer, which we call in user developer integrators. These are people who want to integrate digital print solution into their existing uh, production capability, often in line, uh, but always in, uh, they are experts in what they do, but they're not often not experts in, in inkjet. And therefore, we actually see the need not only to sell people um, uh, print heads but also to sell them electronics and software and and, and various other uh, integrated uh, parts of the of the system but we want to be clear that Zar will not sell uh, through competing uh, channels and again historically we've caused a little bit of confusion in the market by selling print heads through multiple channels and we simplified that significantly now that we'll only sell through limit through our OEMs or through to directly to the user developer integrators. And, and what we want to do ultimately is to offer a, a one-stop shop for our, for our partners so they can actually buy whatever they need to be successful for their application and for their, for their industry. And that might be as simple as just selling print heads because they have all the rest of the capabilities themselves, all the way through to uh, an ink system, print bars, and supporting them on integration and application support for, for their for their products. And whilst we've set out to do that, it's really uh, pleasing to see that we've actually uh, people are recognising what we're trying to achieve, and we've had some very nice feedback of um, how we're actually looking to get back to helping people um, be successful uh, in their applications. Uh, and the, business, the right business model now needs uh, products and uh, technology and, and in Zara we're incredibly uh, lucky to have a fantastic technology which has been around for about 30 years in different uh, forms that people have been very successful over the years but to take it forward for the next 30 years you have a very clear platform of uh, IP and know-how that's going to move the products up in speed to 150 um, kilohertz using all ink types including aqueous, increasing the range of temperature of the print heads to over 200 degrees C, uh, increasing resolution uh, to 1440 uh, DPI uh, and retaining the ability to print at very high uh, viscosities. Uh, it's a unique property of our heads that we're able to print viscosities up to these type of uh, levels. 
Uh, but uh, but in getting those uh, capabilities into customers' hands, you actually need to have a, a product roadmap. And one of the things that we are very keen to ensure is that people build and, and grow confidence in our ability to convert great IP and great technology into great products and do that in a way that people can rely on. Uh, so we successfully launched a 2002 uh, product last year on, on time. We're just about to uh, announce the launch of a new product, which will sh uh, give us a significant increase in, in speed. Uh, we've now working in an alpha phase with uh, three customers for an Araquis uh, capability. Uh, we're hugely excited about the potential um, there. And there's a number of other features that we will bring out um, going forward. And the ability to actually de de deliver these products on time uh, is, is, is enabling our customers to have confidence to see that we'll actually bring out these, these uh, other products in, uh, in a timely manner going forward. But for real innovation, um, you have to look for what's not on the spec sheet. Uh, and, and if you want to have something that isn't quite met by the, the print heads, often you might need to develop uh, a, a unique feature for your uh, application and Zar is prepared and has and will develop heads specifically for uh, for customers requirements and you'll see that coming into the market over the next couple of years and therefore we're uh, we're, we're not only wanting to uh, uh, integrate vertically to help people with electronics and software and other uh, more uh, integrated systems, but also ensure that the print head absolutely meets their uh, requirements. And that might be size, it might be drop size, uh, resolution, other features that be important. But if you go beyond um, that, it's interesting there are other factors that are not necessarily on the spreadsheet that are really important for the success of an application. And, and a good example of that is uh, we've, we've now have a number of customers who want to actually place print heads or a series of print heads at the end of a robotic arm. And as a robot moves around, uh, the acceleration and deceleration uh, can be a real issue for, uh, for, for other print heads. But with the Zara print head, uh, remarkably, uh, they perform incredibly well. And I wanted to show you some, uh, some videos. This is a video showing um, uh, a robot rotating um, the head around, uh, showing that it prints effectively in, in all orientations. On the left-hand side, you can see the acceleration and the, the speed of the drops and the pressure in the head. And underneath the robot, you can see the drops moving. And through all of that, there is no drop in uh, performance of the, uh, of, the, of the print head. And that in itself is a remarkable uh, feature. You then can look at um, the head being uh, moves around in a in a unidirectional, so in a up and down, and this is working around about 0.1 g, so one one meter per second squared. And again, there is no <clears throat> uh, loss of, uh, of 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 print performance. Now, one of the interesting things there is is that how far can you can you take it? Well. Uh, we actually now <clears throat> have worked up to uh, 1G. And I think it's unlikely that any robotic application needs to go at those type of accelerations, but you'll actually see that uh, even with vigorous uh, movement, there is no loss of um, uh, print. And if there is a momentary uh, loss in uh, depriming of the, the, uh, of the nozzles, the nozzles recover immediately. Uh, and this is a remarkable um, point. And people who have been looking to put robotics on uh, uh, with print heads have found that the Zar solution is by far the best uh, uh, in order to sustain print in different orientations and with vigorous accelerations. Uh, so that's, a, that's an example of a feature that's not necessary on a spreadsheet, but you need to get to the point of understanding what the application is. And that really leads into um, trust. And trust is, for me, one of the biggest um, factors um, when we talk about um, partnerships. Because when you uh, are working with uh, another company, often the, you will have the customer coming in and, and, and kind of explaining what they think they need. And, and as I explained before, often they're not necessarily experts in, in inkjet. They're experts in what they, what they do. 
and, and so you know <clears throat> having a conversation about the problems of inkjet what should they be worried about is there a better way to solve uh, this problem <clears throat> what happens if it doesn't work first time because you know my experience is these things rarely work first first time and and, and building that um, uh, trust so that you can actually share uh, share the problem share the concerns and really understand what the customer really wants to achieve is the way that you build partnerships and build um, long-term innovation and it's when you get to that level of trust and understand what the problem really is I think that's where the innovation um, um, starts and the final um, part of this is that all of that is great but internally you need to have a culture of innovation in the company and I hear a lot about um, people having companies where there's a culture of innovation and but as our uh, the real thing for uh, for me uh, is that um, everybody needs to understand that uh, innovation means doing something that you haven't done before and providing a solution that's not been that's not obvious for that um, for that application at the start. And if you do that, sometimes it will be be wrong. And 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 if you have to create an environment where people are not scared to to fail. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't, if they do fail, then the team pulls together to to fix it. And in that environment, getting fresh ideas in and and, and people not being scared to uh, take a risk, I believe that's when the real innovation um, happens. It's usually out of adversity. It's usually when backs against the wall and teams come together and you really get the innovation. But surrounding that, there has to be an environment in which people are not scared to, to fail. I've seen too many organizations where innovation has been a, has been a challenge. And, and usually when you talk to people, it's because if there's been a failure, there's been some form of retribution, which really takes away people's uh, desire to kind of take a risk and go the, the extra mile. And is our, we want to deliver, we want to be successful but we want to support people and we want to make sure that they're able to take those risks and we support them if it doesn't work out. And all of that together, uh, in summary, you have to have the right business model. You need to have the products and technology. You need to trust the people that you're working with. And internally, you need to have that culture of innovation where people are really pushing the boundaries and, and supported as a team. And all of that, everything that we do, we're doing it to make our partners um, successful because if they're successful, we'll be successful. But that their success has to come first. And so that's what we uh, want to get across in terms of the message today is, is that we've got great people. We've got great technology and we want to help our partners be successful. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank, thank you for that, John. Very interesting. I have... Um... I have a few questions, if you've, if you've got some time. Absolutely. Um, about the kind of themes that you pulled out there, which I thought were um, kind of ni nice evolution from the, from the, the October uh, session. So um, first off, what struck me, I, I think, is it, it seems to be a quite a symbiotic relationship between the, the kind of culture and the kind of back to basics approach with technology. So you're kind of, you're kind of almost decluttering some of the... Uh, um some of the technology uh that perhaps w wasn't working as well as others and also kind of just focusing on a creating a culture for people that really uh, hopefully would optimize that performance would, would that be fair to say yeah absolutely and um you know simplifying simplifying what we do both in terms of the the business model the relationships and uh, all of that i think is key uh, to focusing the business in the right the right directions and it's interesting because when I first started, I went out and visited a number of um, customers um, who had been very successful with our um, over over many years, mm. and um, a, a couple of them uh, had shared some frustrations that they had with me. So you know, went there and had had a meeting with them, and they shared their frustrations about some of the things that they didn't like about the way Zar was um, uh, operating. Uh, and then we went for, uh, for 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 dinner, and we we talked more about the future and the the, the the collaboration and how we could work together and what we were going to do. And at the end of the the evening, um, there was a really kind of nice moment where they kind of said, "You know, it's great that mm -hmm. if Zar can get back to how you used to be back in you know maybe two thousand eight or something around then, because we we built our business with Zar." 
Mm. So what we found is there was a huge amount of affection for for Zar, um, and a lot of companies who are successful today built their businesses around Zar technology. And and so getting back to that point where Zar is viewed as a as a as a technical leader, as a great partner, and having technology that um, that you know is, is is absolutely fit for purpose. And I think those three things really are what we're trying to focus on uh, now. Mm. And obviously what came out of it, and it's clear in the title, collaboration is a new innovation, is that um, you really see that as a critical component within within the business, collaboration, but also with the wider industry. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting. You, you, you hear the, the, the kind of the story, you know, you know, somebody walks into a hardware store and says, I want to want a shovel. And he, he actually doesn't want a shovel. He wants a hole in the ground. Mm-hmm. And and maybe there's other ways to get a hole in the ground. You know, you could go and dig the hole for him for, for, a, for a small fee. Or it, it, it's, it's really understanding what's the problem the customer's trying to solve. Uh, and, and, and often the right solution um, is only found when you understand the problem that's actually trying to be, um, to be solved. And typically without that kind of openness and dialogue, um, you, you're not going to get to that to that point so creating really strong relationships based on trust where you where you can be very open with the customer and the customer can be very open with you and that dialogue um, starts and, and so really creating that sort of culture of trust that builds long-term relationships i think is, is is key to success yeah and like you say if that that has to be internal as well as external it's important it, 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 for it to feel genuine and natural i suppose hmm. it, it absolutely does yeah it absolutely does and, and, and st- step on from that, obviously, as a as Zars foundations built on innovation, um, inevitable, isn't it, that failure is a is a part of that. And I guess if you're in a de- defensive type business, you, you're kind of less inclined to try and less less inclined to tolerate failure. So you te- it seems that you see failure as an opportunity almost. I, I think it absolutely is. I, I you know I mean I've been in sort of R and D uh, companies. For- God, probably 30 years now, Mark, I show my, show my age, show my age, but you know, and, and, and very, very rarely does anything happen uh, right first time. Mm. And, and, you know, there are, so there are different levels of it not, not working or failure, however you want to describe it. And then I see often that the way you actually get real innovation is, is at the point at which it, it fails, if you have the right environment, and then the the broader team comes together to fix the problem, and you get you know an insert an input of different people and different backgrounds and different skill sets. Then that's where the great ideas um, um, come from. And 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 if you build that kind of culture where you know if something if somebody or something fails to uh, to deliver, and the team steps in to help it and, and deliver it, and that ends up being a better solution, and and we celebrate that as a, as a team then the fear of failure is taken away and people will take more risks and and without risk you don't really innovate it's really tough to to create innovative ideas and products and and without actually stepping outside the comfort zone and and, and doing things that that potentially might not work hmm. yeah absolutely and um and i guess that builds a, a sense of resilience as well that you're in it together that, that you fail together you succeed together but actually it's about solving problems moving forward, isn't it? I, absolutely i think you know the, 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 a lot of stress and anxiety in 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 workplaces that people can feel isolated they can feel that you know they have to solve this problem on, on, on their own you know as soon as they know that they're not on their own and that there's there's a team behind them that are supporting them i think people would end up <clears throat> the confidence is there and, and 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 knowing that you know you, you you've got help to get it over the line and, and again i think that's where you know helping the customer if the customer has a, has an issue fixing and helping the customer solve that problem because ultimately we're only successful if the customer's successful. So, you know, making sure we actually transfer the innovation into the customer because that's where it really gains value. Yeah, yeah. And and also rediscovering some of the kind of core values of Zara. Of course, one of the key values must be that you're, um, you've retained your independence. You're still an independent brand that specializes in a certain element of the, of the I, 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 Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, we, we, compared to all the other inkjet companies, we're, you know, we're, we're relatively small, well, very small. But I think that size, that size has, to, has a virtue. You know, we right. have companies who come along and they want a print head that meets their requirements. And, and we can 
choose to actually produce a head that's specific for that that customer and you'll see that over you know and people launching products over the next um, uh, couple of years that people will have a head that's specifically for uh, for, for them or branded in in for, for, for them and and that ability to um, to actually do things with uh, and do it quite quickly because if the opportunity arises we can we can change and we can respond within within days you know we are uh, the decision makers in the business are really you know uh, we want to make sure the business the decision makers are really connected to the market connected to the to the customers because if we see the opportunity and, and there we can move really quickly to do that and i think that's a huge advantage that we have uh, with, uh, with 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 that with our size yeah yeah absolutely and um Finally, what appears to come through there is quite exciting is that water-based, um, much talked about ink um, requirement going forward if, with, with certain applications, it appears that Zar is uh, now going to be in that space as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Zar's bulk technology has never been capable of um, uh, printing water-based inks. Uh, we, we solved that problem. Uh, uh, now we've had heads internally printing now for, for you know, hundreds thousands of hours and uh, we have engaged with uh, three uh, three customers who are looking to build alpha and beta um, systems to to fully test them uh, once that's once that's done if that all goes goes well then we'll be looking to launch you know that, that kind of product next sometime next year back end of next year a uh, lot lots to do then but i think it is it's, it's a real sort of sense of you know that's where real innovation came from you know, we've we've tried and fails over a number of years to produce a, a water-based head but actually bringing different skill sets together and everything looking at the problem in a slightly different way uh we now we're now in a great position and um so those people who've always thought well wouldn't it be great if i could have a czar print head with all of its benefits of through flow and all of the nozzle open time in a in a water-based product and um and the the, the when, when we're talking to people about the product uh, they're, they're hugely excited about it in terms of what it can actually deliver in terms of um, performance. So I think that's going to be a great new uh, market and opportunity for uh, for Zar. Brilliant. Well, listen, thanks so much for uh, joining us again at, um, well, for the first time at the Future Print Leaders Summit, but again with the Future Print event. Um, that was an interesting discussion and um, really appreciate Zar being part of um, the growing future print community. So great. No, and, and thanks for the invite. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks.